Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do our hair and our makeup. Why, you ask? Because I want to. Today I wanted to do a look that I do most of the time. So I would say it's my new go-to makeup, to be honest. And it is the makeup that I do when I have just stuff to get done and I want a face of makeup. It's a makeup look that I do when I want to feel like my best self. It's really quick and easy, the makeup. And there's not a huge amount of product. If anything, actually, all of this stuff would fit so nicely in a little makeup bag that could be your go-to face. So loads of these products you'll have seen from me before. I'm also gonna show you how I do my hair. I've got a tool here from GHD, it's brand spanking new. Some of you guys might remember the Glide, which is the hot brush. This is like the Glide's big sister. This is the GHD Rise. Part of this video is sponsored by GHD with my partnership. I've also got a partnership with GHD. So I've been playing around with the Rise and I actually have, you won't be able to tell right now because it's clipped away, but I've actually got a new fringe and I use this every day to style my fringe. Well, so I'm really excited to show you guys because that is one question I get quite a lot. So the makeup portion of this video is going to be quite short but you'll see it's such a nice difference. Nothing too heavy but it really does make a huge difference. So we're going to start off with primer. This is the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer and this is the Protecting Broad Spectrum. This is the SPF. I remember using this. It was actually on my last, one of my last PR trips that I was on. <laughs> And because I've got my fringe back, I'm really like reminiscing because I had my fringe at that time. But we went to Courcheville skiing when the primers were launched. So this is made with makeup in mind. It just works really well. You can see there's no cast at all once it's rubbed in. It's nice and moisturizing. It's not difficult to rub in, which I find some SBS are. They're just quite chalky, aren't they? So we're using this as our base. Next step is Hollywood Follows Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. I use shade number five. This is nearly done actually. It's not a highlighter, it's not a primer, it's not a foundation, it's a bit of a hybrid of them all. It's very glowy and I just like to apply it kind of all over. And I'm actually gonna use the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. The normal one, there's an illuminating one as well that I use, but this is in the shade three in one sand. I find, for me personally, it goes on better with a brush than my fingers. So I like to go into my brush, got it on the back of my hand here, and then I just start blending them together. And you'll see by the end of it, what we've got is a very glowy, very natural, but perfected base. I'm enjoying the sheer coverage life. Oh, I love it all aspects of life. I love full coverage, I love medium coverage, I love matte, I love dewy, I love sheer, I love it all. I highly recommend trying this out if you struggle with foundation and what finish you like and if you are more of a natural coverage wearer, you'll really like this. And like I said, if you've tried it before, because I don't, personally, I didn't like how it applied with my fingers on myself, but with the brush, it's great. And you can build up certain areas. So I'm just taking my time to go around my hair. I've done my eyebrows already off camera. I was going to try something new with my eyebrows, and then I ended up doing the exact same thing I always do. So here they are. Uh, I just used my uh, Benefit Cub Brow, which is like a pomade, and then I set them with 24 hour brow setter. So I'm taking some more tinted moisturizer and I'm just kind of like patting that in. But you can see, look how dewy. This gives me like model vibes. So you can see I am quite shiny. These lights as well are making things look a lot shinier than they are. But I'll show you how I finish my base off. So now we're gonna conceal. This is where I get my coverage from. This is the Laura Mercy. I'm very heavy on Laura Mercy today so far. This is the Laura Mercy Flawless Fusion in the shade 3W, which means three warm. So you can see it's got a nice warm undertone and I'm just concealing where I need it. So I've got a wee bit of discoloration there. I like to brighten up my inner corner. I love using a bit of concealer around my mouth. I've got a wee bit of kind of darkness around my mouth because I'm blemishes. A little more coverage in the center as well. I like the doe foot on this concealer the most, I think. It goes on so easy. And then I'm just gonna go in with my foundation brush and pat that out again. I pretty much do that every day, you know. I use the same brush. I think it speeds things up and also it just helps my products all kind of merge together on my face, I think. But whenever I do this skin, I always get really nice compliments on my skin, I think, because it looks fresh. And the concealer's got a slightly more matte finish, which in the center of the face looks really good. And then underneath my eye, even though this brush is huge, I just get it in there. Now I'm gonna go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Look at that. It's nearly finished again. And I'm gonna go in with the Morphe E48 brush. This is one of my favorite powder brushes, you know. I think it's cause it's nice and tapered. It just fits under the eye so easily. So what I do is I get a bit of powder and I just pat that and that's just gonna seal the deal. Nothing's gonna move. And then I continue to do that 
in the usual spots, which is around my mouth, just anywhere that is looking shiny, that's not flattering. For example, like here, if I'm shiny, I just look oily around my chin. I like to do around my mouth because I talk a lot, which means my foundation creases. It's a really wearable combination. And my skin as well, the colour, the colour's great. It just looks like me. I just look like me, but better. Next up is bronzer. I'm going to use Hula Caramel. I feel, I feel like I used this loads at one point and then went on to something else and now I'm back using Hula Caramel. It's just beautiful. So I'm going to go in with my usual Smith 118 brush and I'm going to just bronze nice and high on my cheeks. I think if any of you are starting back work or going out again and into the public and you want to wear a full face of makeup, you'll see by the end of it, but I just think that this is one of the most lovely speedy makeups that you can do that also looks like it looks like you've put an effort with your makeup, you know. But it's actually, it is really quick. And I'm just taking that bronzer in the sides of my nose. Like I would wear this makeup anywhere. Hence why it's my everyday makeup. Uh, for my blusher, I was going to use a cream, but I actually, I think we're looking very dewy. So I'm going to go in with powder. Uh, I'm going to just use my bronzer brush and we're going to use Laura Mercy Peach. This is one of my old favourites. I, I use it all the time. So I'm going to go in with my brush and we're going to keep the blusher nice and high. And actually, yeah, I'm going to stipple it on. And I like to go over my nose. And then do you know what I like doing these days? Can I continue my blush right over my nose, like over my cheeks. I just think it looks so pretty. If you don't love blush, don't do this. <laughs> but um, I'm here and I love blush. So I'm going right over my cheeks, up the bridge of my nose and then over. And again, if you go nuts with this, you can use your foundation brush to pat it back. Tell me I don't look adorable. Dare you. I think this looks really sweet. I also think it kind of looks a bit like bitchy. I don't know why, but you know that we like to look bitchy, but we're actually really nice. Put a wee bit more powder on my forehead because I'm really glow. I'm really glowing. We're looking pretty good. This, see what I mean? This is why I do this makeup when I want to feel nice. This is a great makeup to do if you wake up and you're like, mm, I don't feel very good. Put on some makeup. For highlight, we're throwing it back. This is Laura Geller's Gilded Honey, uh, oldie but goodie. And I'm going to use a little eyeshadow brush so we can strategically place this highlight just on the high points of the face. This is just because I'm really glowy today. So we don't need loads of highlight or I'm going to end up just looking like a big glow ball, which is not a bad thing. But I want to I want to just apply my cheeks. And this pulls really golden. You can see there's not one touch of pink in it, which is great, which is something to bear in mind if you tend to go for a more maybe champagne or pearl highlight. This one's very gold. But it is beautiful. And then I'm actually going to take a little bit of that and we're just going to highlight the bridge of the nose and then the tip. Let's just do the cupid's bow though. Four eyes, so simple, but very effective. So I'll zoom you in. So we're gonna do, I may as well just do my freckle while we're here. This is my little Charlotte Tilbury felt tip brown liner and I use it every day. But honestly, you can use whatever you want. But I just use that to fill in my freckle and then sometimes I add a little other one. Maybe I will today. So usually I just pick where I want it. Sometimes to cover a spot is quite clever. But I'm gonna just do it here. So for our eyes, we're going to do nothing on the lid at all. Sometimes I'll just get a little bit of that powder brush and just run it over my lid so there's no oiliness. And we're going to do a liner. So I'm going to use the House Laboratories liquid eyeliner. And it's got a felt tip pen. And I'm just going to use this to do some like medium flicks. See what I mean? Nice, nice flicks. And then for our lashes, I have here my Tati lashes. And what I've done is I've pre-cut them. So these are the style TL Jamie 2. And you'll see where I've cut them. I'm going to apply the inner corner to the outer corner of my eye. So I'm going to glue these little half lashes up. And I keep the rest of the lashes because I can do something else with them. I can flip them over and wear them on opposite sides. I am now going to apply... My mascara. So this is the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes by Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm going to use this on my top lashes to get them really thick. So when you're doing a half lash, you do actually need to pay attention to your mascara. Make sure it's nice and full at the front so the half lash doesn't look too silly. I'm kind of loading my lashes up with the product and then combing it through. So if you're not a lash wearer, 
you'll see that because I've done the half liner, the lashes are really kind of stand out anyway, which is really nice. So we've got our little half lash. Look how tiny, very sweet. And we're gonna just stick it on. Actually, I might wait for my lashes to dry a little bit. And you know what, actually, in the theme of being speedy, doing speedy makeup, I'm just gonna do my lips here as well. So this is a great lip for mask wearers. I'm gonna use a lip liner to define. This is the Victoria Beckham Lip Definer in the shade number four. There we go, so we've got a lovely defined lip. And then now I'm gonna go in with the Ella Luz Lip and Cheek Stain. This is Camila Coelho's new brand, so exciting. And it is a lip tint, so if I show you, it is a really beautiful ready tone, but I just think it, lo it looks really stunning. It's really sheer, and because your own lip colour shines through, it just looks, it all, I think it would suit everyone to be honest, but I think it looks beautiful. And because it's a stain, it will dry down, it won't move around under your mask. I've never been big into lip stains to be honest until Victoria Beckham did hers and then this is is just beautiful. Aww, wait until you see the finished look and you'll love it. Time for the lashes. Makeup's done. I think it looks really really nice. This is my perfect everyday look. I feel quite glam. I feel quite pretty. I feel a little bit bitchy as well with this lip colour. I think it was super quick and easy and we've still got that natural base which is really nice. So now it's time for hair. So you might remember the GHD Glide, this totally broke the internet. It's GHD's first hot brush. You might remember that I absolutely loved this, it was great and a lot of people use this brush to smooth out their hair but also to get a little bit more of a kind of blow dry effect with the brush so that what they would do is kind of pull it out and use it like this. Well, say hello to Glide's big sister. This is the GHD Rise. So I'm gonna turn this on. And this is GHD's second hot brush. And you can see it's almost like a wand. That's my new favorite thing. It is so great for mimicking that of a blow dry. It's also what I use to style my little fringe every single day. It's what I've been needing in my life. If you look at it, you can see that there's bristles like a brush. So the effect that you get will never be the same as a tong. Tong, tongs essentially straighten and flatten your hair while you use it, whereas this, because of the bristles, it's always gonna be a little bit more broken up, which makes it more that more, kind of more softer and more natural, I guess. We we'll take these little clips out. So what I've done is I've used the GHD Root Lift Spray. I sprayed it right around the top of my hair, just like so. I didn't use any underneath because I don't really need volume underneath my hair. Uh, so I've just used it around the top and I actually used a tiny bit in my fringe as well. And I'm gonna keep this side super smooth and sleek. I'm gonna leave that side, but I'm gonna do all this side so you can see the difference. I have already used it a little bit, um, but my camera didn't pick that up, unfortunately. So I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna show you. And then at the end, I'll show you how I get my kind of like 70s fringe, which this is a flipping lifesaver for. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our section. I'm gonna just show you, see, I'll show you this little bit here. So I always like to brush my section first just so it doesn't get tuggy or anything. So I've got extensions, even though my hair is not super long, anymore I got it chopped, I've still got all my extensions in. So my hair is quite thick, so I just need to take my time with it. But I'm gonna use the rise right at the root and I'm gonna just spin the hair around. Also, it's quite, <laughs> I don't wanna say this, in case you guys go in haphazardly, but it's quite difficult to burn yourself because of the bristles. And for thick hair, eight seconds is great. And then what I like to do is I just like to, like, just pretend I'm getting a blow dry. And I give the brush a little roll round. Wow. Do you see that? So what you can do is you can go all in the same direction or you can alternate. I like just doing it all in the same direction. It gives me that really nice big blown out look. Let me just do this little bit again to show you. So I get my section, I give it a little brush to make sure it's all nice and smooth. And we're gonna get the brush and we're gonna go right in at the root. And we're just gonna tuck that hair around. Leave it for a few seconds. You don't need to hold it too tight, hold it nice and loose so the hair can just fall through the brush. Wow, see how quick and easy that is? So I'm gonna show you a little bit of my extensions as well. Now just because of the extensions, I think my extensions are coarser than my hair. So this is the best way to use the rise with extensions. And it's almost like using it like a tong, like a curling wand almost. So I'm gonna go up over my head and I'm gonna get my hair and I'm gonna twist it round. And it's super easy to do this because the bristles hold it all in place. And then I just kind of move it down a little bit. 
And this isn't really for curls, this is for more like a blow dry, which is more movement in the hair. It's giving your hair more shape. It's just smoother, it's smoothed it out and it's given it a little bit more movement and it's given it a lot more body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my way around my hair. What you can do as well to make it even easier is section your hair off. I just get it and I just get in there, get involved. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do all this side. I'll speed it up, a little montage for you. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll compare both sides and just see the difference. So there we go, I have just kind of zoomed round my hair. You can see that I've got much more kind of texture. I just think my colour looks really nice with it this way. It's just a really effortless wave and I'm gonna just set that with a wee bit of hairspray and then you can do the butterfly, which Patrick Wilson taught me. So by picking up your hair and giving it a spray, it's almost like volumising in itself. So look at that. It's just super beachy and big. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and finish this side and I'll be right back and then I'll show you how I do my fringe because this is a nice wearable way to wear my fringe parted but I like to wear my fringe quite fringy so I'll be right back. Do you know what? I actually prefer the second side and I sectioned. What a difference it makes when you section your hair. So I basically just cut this whole bit in half and did the bottom first and then did the top and it worked amazing. But it just is like the biggest, most gorgeous bedhead oh my god i'm obsessed this is like i feel i look either like i go to art school or that i'm really wealthy so let's do this fringe i'm going to tuck all this away it literally takes two seconds i get my little fringy pieces make sure i've got them all not this bit so these bits are nice and they're kind of flicked away from my face so they'll go perfect and then i get my brush and i go right at the root and i just let my hand do this can i guide it round and see if you just give the brush a turn it grabs the hair slightly okay we're getting there sometimes as well what i'll do is i'll get the brush and i'll just brush down at the top and i give it a little brush to the side and then i give it a little brush to the other side just because i've got quite a strong middle part at the moment and then i'm going under letting the brush do its thing give it a quick turn and then all the hair will be stuck in there and then I just kind of roll it up, it's like a hot roller, look at that. And then I unravel it and let the hair just gently fall out. So usually my fringe is a bit shorter than this, but see just for that. Oh. And see that fringe with a ponytail. Oh my god, it's stunning. And it really does not take long. It's not as long as curling your whole head. And the thing that I love the most is that now I've styled my hair and set it, this hair will stay that kind of nice tussled look. But the only thing that I'll need to touch up every day is my fringe. And I just turn my brush on and do the same thing every day. And my fringe always sits like this. It's a bit curly soon. It's a bit like 70s, but that's my vibe today. That's who I want it to be today. So hey guys, I hope you liked my little tutorial. This is definitely my favourite go-to hair and makeup at the moment. I just think it's really cute. It makes me feel nice. At the end of the day, that's what we're here for. To feel good and to look good. As always, I'll link everything that I used down below. And yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <sighs> I just wanna be me. I just wanna be me. Today is a day for napping. I'm gonna try, but I just need to give it a little. Oh, it's right in my face. Rubbing that in, can you hear Juno singing in the back? I'm finding these lights very bright today. That's a lot of concealer. Oh well. It sure do be beautiful. Not as beautiful than you. Just, and then. Let me just do Good job.